So as you can see, I have quite a few keyboards here. I wanted to share what are the best keyboards, what are my favorite keyboards, because there are so many keyboards to choose from. There is a, a ridiculous amount of keyboards that decision paralysis is real. So there are of course different layouts of keyboards as well. You have 60% all the way up to 100%. You also have some fancy weird ones here and there. But I wanted to cover the middle ground. I wanted to cover this sort of 70% layout. That is what most people are used to. The great thing is, Many of these keyboards are actually offered in bigger versions with number pads for 100% layouts, if that's what you need. So I try to make sure that the keyboards I have here do sort of fit the bill for most people. All of these keyboards at the time of making this video are available to buy, whether that's on Amazon, whether that's on a popular sort of retailer store. I've also skipped super budget options, anything sort of below $50. Everything here is usually $100 and up mainly because I think when you look at those budget options, they're all pretty much the same and they're not going to be very high quality. I feel like they're not gonna last that long. And the brands that they come from as well aren't really known to be the best unless you're going with someone like Logitech. Most of the brands are just like off brands or whatever. So I wanted to make sure that I cover keyboards here that I would personally recommend to friends. Worth mentioning as well, most of these keyboards are catered to Mac users mainly because most of my audience is Mac, but they of course do work with PC as well. You won't have any issue using most of these with a PC. So let's start with the Apple Magic Keyboard, which goes for around $79. There is also a black version, space gray version for $99. I've used many keyboards over the years, but the one I keep using and coming back to when it comes to using with my Mac is the Magic Keyboard. It has nowhere near as much key travel as any of the other keyboards here, but I've just gotten used to typing on this keyboard that now, using the other keyboards for me personally, like I've used them all quite extensively. They're great, but I still just keep coming back to this. However, I still probably wouldn't recommend it to most people because unless you've gotten used to using it yourself, I just don't think it's worth buying. I think one of the best things about this keyboard is that the function row of keys double up as sort of other functions like brightness, enabling different things in Mac OS, pausing and skipping tracks and things like that. Thankfully, some of these other keyboards also have those options. I think when the Magic Keyboard first came out, this sort of slim profile keyboard that's quite stylish looking, you know, very simple looking as well. It, it was a great keyboard, but now there are so many other great alternatives. So I don't have a sponsor for this video. So instead I'm going to recommend my own products. So yeah, we have ULX Desk Max here. I have a gray one, I have a black one on my desk. Make sure to check those out. They're great with any sort of workspace setup. I have the gray one here on this desk and yeah, it looks incredible. I also have wallpapers and stuff. You know, anyone who buys wallpapers, I really, really appreciate it. It really helps support the channel. So yeah, check those out. Appreciate your support. Next up, we have the Logi MX Keys. So this goes for $99, but it can also be regularly found on offer. This is probably the most popular choice when it comes to a keyboard for a Mac or PC. And I can completely see why, because it's actually a very good keyboard. It has quite a bit more key travel than something like the Magic Keyboard, but it's not all the way up to a full height mechanical keyboard. I specifically have the Mac version here, which comes in white, but it also does come in black and Logitech offer a full size version as well if you need a number pad. With the dished keys that it has, for some people it should actually make typing easier because obviously you can fill the keys a bit better. It has a backlight which is pretty clever as it will turn on automatically as you use the keyboard and then turn off when you stop using the keyboard. It is wireless using Bluetooth. The battery lasts for around 10 days on a full charge or it can last up to five months if you turn the backlighting off. This has been around for years now and I can completely see why it's popular. It does the basics very well. Next up, we have the MX Mechanical. This goes for around $149, but again, you can regularly find it on offer. Mechanical keyboards have really blown up over the last few years, and it's become ridiculous how many contenders there are now in the space. But Logitech recently entered the space, and their MX Mechanical is definitely a great place to start. This is the ideal keyboard for those who want to get into mechanical keyboards, 
but one it's work right out of the box with no setup required other than connecting it to your machine. It comes in two different sizes, the full size or the mini. I have the mini here and I really like the size of this one. This is a low profile mechanical keyboard, so it's not going to have the same key travel as something like a full height mechanical keyboard, but I think it's a good middle ground, especially if you're more used to using something like a laptop keyboard. There's three different switch types on offer when you purchase the keyboard. I have the tactile quiet on this one. It has Bluetooth for wireless connectivity and you can pair it up to three different devices. Battery life is good for 15 days with backlighting on or with it off, you'll get 10 months, which is pretty incredible. If I were to recommend a mechanical keyboard for someone who's looking to get into the space, looking to try out a mechanical keyboard for the first time, I think this is the one I'll point them towards. Next up, we have the Nufi Air 75. This goes for $109. This is actually a very similar keyboard to the MX Mechanical in the sense of it's a low profile mechanical keyboard. Interestingly, this is also cheaper than the Logitech MX Mechanical, yet I feel like it feels more premium. The keys feel a lot more secure in place and it doesn't feel as cheap as the MX Mechanical. It does have an interesting design though. It has some interesting colors for the escape key, the enter key, and the space bar. Some people will love that, some people will hate it. I'll let you be the judge. The great thing is you can switch the keycaps out if you like. You can even change the switches entirely as it's hot swappable. So you can then change the typing experience drastically. It has Bluetooth and you can connect up to four different devices. You can also connect directly via USB-C if you prefer. One feature this has, which no other keyboard here has, is the full RGB lighting effects. So if you like the look of Unicorn Vomit, you can have it all over your keyboard. What I particularly like is the two LED strips on either side of the keyboard. The left one shows caps lock and the connection mode, and the right one shows battery level and system mode. You can also make the right one show simple gradients. Battery life isn't as good as the previous two with around a week of battery life. I do like this keyboard though, more than I thought I would. If you don't mind trying out a more independent brand that's not something like Logitech, it's definitely worth considering this if you want to try a mechanical keyboard. Next up, we have the Mode Sonnet, or Sony, I'm not exactly sure, I think it's Sonnet. And yeah, this thing, whoa, it is ridiculously heavy. It's an absolute tank. But this keyboard is very much on the absolute other end compared to any other keyboard here, mainly because of the pricing of this thing. But damn, like this is heavy, guys. It's really hard to explain how heavy it is. It's so much heavier than anything else here. You could do some serious damage with this. Why do I feel like I always wanna hit people with keyboards? <laughs> but yeah, this is a seriously heavy boy. It's a much more premium keyboard that's tailored towards those looking for a more customized experience. It starts at $299 for a standard spec, and that doesn't even include keycaps or switches. You have to buy them separately. The one I have here in this spec with the brass bottom, the brass accent, and a bunch of other options starts at $619. And again, that's before switches or keycaps. That's a lot of money, of course it is but I like to compare it to cars. Something like the Logitech MX Mechanical, I like to see that as like a Toyota. It does the same thing, it does the same thing. It types, if both these keyboards type. This is reliable, does the job, doesn't do it in a fancy way, it just works. This is more like a Porsche. You know, when you spec a Porsche, when you buy a Porsche, there is an absolute endless list of options. It's the same with this. You can customize this to your heart's content. You can change everything about it. You can have different materials, different switches, different keycaps, different accents, all sorts of things with it. That's how I like to see the two things. They're not really meant to cater to the same person. You know, someone who's looking for something just to work, they don't want to mess around with it. They want it to work out of the box, get the Logitech MX Mechanical or the Nufi or something like that. But if you're looking to step it up a level, if you're looking for something that's really customizable, that's really tailored to you, this is what you look at. And of course, it does cost money. It's going to because the quality of this thing compared to anything else here, it just blows everything else out of the water. It's not even close. This is made from the best quality materials you can get, the keycaps, the switches, everything. This is an amazing keyboard. At the same time, I feel like I don't use it to its full potential, mainly because you know when I'm typing on my Mac, I'm using my Magic Keyboard. This is actually part of my PC gaming setup. So I'm not typing as much on there, but I am using the WASD keys a lot for when I'm gaming. But yeah, like it's just an amazing keyboard. I can't sort of praise this keyboard enough. Now, again, I'm not really going to recommend it to most people, but I did want to cover it anyway. 
I did want to share it just to show what you can get on the other end of the spectrum. Please leave in the comments below what keyboard you're using right now. I'm really interested to see if you guys have any other keyboards here or if you're using something else because there are so many keyboards out there. I'm always interested to see what else there is out there that people are using. I've obviously tried to cover the sort of mass market, the, the easy to access, the ones that anyone sort of can get to other than this one. But the other ones, yeah, anyone can really buy those. They're quite easy to get. But yeah, please leave a comment with your own keyboard. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter and subscribe for more.